this guy. Let's get this. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. God is good for this is today that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is today that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Tabernacle Trinity Hall. Praise God. Where I'm your host, James and Pamela. Harold, praise God. Pam, why do we love God? Because he first loved us. Because he first loved us. Us. No other way we can love God except that he initiated all things. Guys, how have your day been out there? How have your days been? Praise God. Let alone your day. Pam, how have your day been? Busy today? as usual, but it was a good day. How about Amen. yours? Busy and, and um, kind of pressured today, but God is good. You know, I, I, I felt like you know, Satan was tempting me. You know, you, sometimes you can feel pressure like being in a hurry, being in a rush, uh, in a hurry to do something that's pertinent. And so you only have a little bit of time to get ready for it. So you find yourself rushing through it. And you know, when you find yourself rushing through something, your patience shortens. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's, 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 it's strange because, you know, when you're, when you're patient, when you're humble, when you have time in general, as people, when you have time, plenty of time to do something, you don't feel pressure. You have time to sit and think about it. You don't have to worry about getting overwhelmed. Right. You know, being preoccupied with um, a purpose um, or a focus of something that you have time to do. And the closer you get to that, the shorter that patience becomes. And the more rush you feel, the more pressure you feel. And, you know, I said, you know what? I said, Satan, I said, I'm not even going to give you um, victory over anything, you know. And when I said that, it was like, okay, wow, you know what? I just made it to the next step in my walk with God. Amen. Because I was able to press against that. I was able to not let Satan flare up me. You resisted. I the resisted devil. the devil. Yeah, and flee flee. Flee. I submitted to God. You did. I submitted to God. And guys, you know, we know us who've been walking with God for a while that it's not always easy. Even the most simplest thing, amen? The most simplest thing can sometimes challenge your character, take you out of character or who you are. But the truth of the matter is we are who we are. Amen. So, Amen. so it's really nothing that's taken us. A lot of people say, you know what? I almost lost my Christianity, you know, five more minutes or a few more seconds, you know, or a person, you know, making me lose my step out of my character, my Christianity character. Amen. But you know who you are, is who you are. That's your character, amen? Your character is who you are. Your personality is who you become because of the knowledge that you put in you. When you're taking knowledge in, it shapes how your perspective is, amen? And your perspective is how you act and how you react to, to life. And so a lot of times, you know, we talk about um, Christianity worldview, you know, and to make it, it's a broad subject, but to make it narrow, we're talking about lifestyle, taking God and to apply him into every aspect of your life. An example of not doing that is you're in college, you're a Christian. And so you're learning all this thing, but you don't see nothing about God. You know, they're talking about evolutionary you're talking about the Big Bang, but nobody's talking about God. Nobody's talking about the sixth day creation of the world. Of course, on the seventh day, he rested. Amen. Nobody talks about that. And sometimes we come up in a church and church does not teach us nothing but faith, faith, hell, faith, hell, faith. But they don't teach you how to hell faith. They don't teach you how to apply God's word in your life. So that's like. And I read, and it makes sense, a baby been born. You're growing, they tell you, it's blessed to be born. 
It's blessed to be. You got all these questions. That all the answers you get is blessed to be born. It's blessed to be born. But nobody is telling you how you should go about doing anything. So you're not learning how to apply Christian worldview into your life. So what you do, you compromise. That Christian worldview becomes a inner faith and not a faith that is manifesting through you because you don't know how, because you have not been taught how to do that. Amen. And so me and Pam, we always talk about applying the word of God. We always talk about application, life application. As a matter of fact, that is exactly uh, one of the reasons why we start doing the um, ministry over the social media, because God told me, he said, I have children and you have sisters and brothers uh, in the social media. And so we did a, a, a lesson on that. And, and we have all kinds of people, people who are anti-sociable, people who don't know how to feel comfortable around other people, people who've been in the church for the wrong reasons and people who've been in the church and their feelings been hurt by church going people. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, this is why, you know, we started doing this, but this is where we always said, used to say, we probably need to get back to saying it. And I'm saying it now where we make biblical application easy. Amen. Amen. So this is what we do. We help you to not just know faith, the word faith, but we help you to know what it means. We help you to not just know the definition of faith, but we also help you to be able to apply what faith is. Praise God. So, you know, God is a awesome God. He is an awesome God. And so that's what we are here to do to help you make biblical application easy. So, with that being said, I have started writing the book on Deuteronomy a while ago. And I did chapter one and chapter two. And praise God, I will have to pull it from my bookshelf. You guys see that we got a new um, back. You know, this is, this is my library. Amen. And I always wanted to include it, but it was too junky. <laughs> Amen. And so I was just experimenting around. And remember, that I was telling you guys I wanted to get away from Tabernacle Trinity Hall, this show, and get more so down to Tabernacle Trinity Hall ministry. Amen. And so we did the show because it was better to catch people's attention by it being a podcast. Amen. So that's why we did it that way. Praise God. So, you know, God is good. And so while you're doing that, and see, it makes it easier too. I can reach back here like this. Watch this. And pull things out of my library. Amen. And so I started writing the book on Harold's application commentary for Deuteronomy. And so this is it. This is my first book I've written. This is um, chapter two. Chapter one was the first book that I written. And I'm going to do um, one for every chapter in the book of Deuteronomy. Praise God. God is awesome, God. And so with that being said, we know that Deuteronomy is in the um, first five books, the um, Pentateuch, which what we call also the law. Amen. Amen. Genesis, um, S, um, Exodus, um, um, numbers and um, Deuteronomy, and I think I forgot one. I'm gonna find Leviticus, amen. Mm -hmm. So, Genesis, Exodus, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the first five books of the law. And it's very important because the first five books of the law is also in your Hebrew Bible, and the Hebrew Bible does not. They do things a little bit different the way that they format the Bible. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I read it. You know, it's interesting for reading. And, you know, it's the word of God. Amen. Everything that's in our Bible is also in, in 
not everything, but everything that's in it is in our Babel. Amen. But everything that's in the Babel that we read is not in the Hebrew Babel. Because the Hebrew Babel is about um, Old Testament. Amen. And the Septuagint, you start getting into your Greek, you start getting into your New Testament. But anyhow, so there's 34 chapters in the book of Deuteronomy. And so I'm debating how I should write that book. Should I put it all in one book or should I continue to do with small chapters, one for each chapter? So guys, if you're listening, let me know what you think. Um, so that I can pursue that. Should I continue to do small books? And you know, our attention span is only like that. Amen. Amen. And so that's why I started doing it, you know, in little books. This book right here on chapter two is not more than, let's see, 51 pages long. And so I don't know, maybe I should just keep them all like this. And then also do a master volume and just put all of them in one book. Amen. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, finance was a factor in all of it when I was thinking through all of this as well. Amen. So anyhow, um, initiator. We love God because God first loved us. Amen, pal. Amen. And so with that being said, before I go into the Father, I want to say, Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. Amen. And you can tell I'm preoccupied. Amen. I'm excited and I have reasons to be excited. We have a new format and everything and I'm working on my doctorate now. I started working on my PhD. Amen. God is awesome, God. Um, yes, he is awesome. So um, good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And some of you probably caught that, amen? Because I think I put um, good evening before I put good afternoon, amen? So guys, that's what I'm saying. You know, you know what? The best moments, the best experiences are when we are blooping, amen? We have fun when we are blooping, amen? When you're watching... Uh, movies been made when they show the bloopers afterwards. You see everybody laugh, laughing and having fun. Mm -hmm. And they say that there's healing in laughter, amen? It is. And so I like to key in on moments like that, guys. I could have just easily went head on and not say anything else about it. But, you know, when you do that, you miss life's best experiences, amen? The best experiences. Guys, I remember... Being a kid, sitting at the table, eating dinner with the family, your siblings, your sisters, your brothers, your mother, your father. And somebody bring us something. You know how kids can bring up things that is very tickling. And we all sit there and sometimes it be so tickling. When one person start laughing, the other person start laughing. And because that person laughing now, you are even laughing harder. And everybody at the table is laughing. And sometimes I get so tickled that I fall, you fall out of the chair. Mm -hmm. You're so tickled, amen? amen? You fall out of the chair. Parents tell me I was eating some peanuts to say, peace must got on my lip. And, you know, there's healing in laughter. And so I always try to make it a point, you know, when we do bloopers, you know, amen. So you guys, y'all bear with me. What you do, you charge it to my head. Don't charge it to my heart. But it's in my heart where I store the memory. Amen. God is an awesome God. So, you know, he is an awesome God. And um, praise God. Praise God. And praise God. Amen. 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 So, we did do a show on the initiator. But we're talking now about who is God. Amen. So, with that being said, we could give multiple descriptions about who is God. But we will discuss at least three. And all three are going to be initiator, sovereign, and love. Amen. 
that's what those three are going to be because God is an awesome God. And guys, you know, we did do a whole show on, on um, the initiator. I think we did like seven parts on that. But I always say learning is redundant. Amen. And I, I see that word supposed to be description. I'll go back and um, change that later on if you guys are looking at that. Praise God. <laughs> I changed that before um, I put it in. <laughs> Pam also is writing a little note for me to make sure that I see that. But I, I do see it. And um, I need to change it even before I publish it. I don't know if I can. I want to go here and do that if I can. I don't know if I can see that far, Pam. So I'm going to just do it like this. I'm going to put in D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T-U-R. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, T-I-O-N, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. where did I stop at? Hold up for a minute. Description, P-T-I-O-N. I have no idea where I was going with that. God is awesome, God. So Satan, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Okay, now here we go. So I have that now, I think, corrected. I don't know if it's going to be corrected while you guys are looking at it. I'm going to do a refresh just to see if it is corrected, amen, God is good. We're taking our time. We are taking our time. And so it is um, corrected, but the T is not there, pal. So I got to go back. The T didn't, I know I said T, um, but I didn't get it in. So I'm going to put the yes, T no. in right there after the P. And I want to go back in. And I'm going to do another refresh. Praise God. I'm going to do another refresh. This is what happens, guys, when we get to know one and another. We don't worry about a whole lot of other stuff we can afford to do. This is family time. This is family time. You are my sister, sisters, and you are my brother, brothers. Amen. So this is family time, and, and God is good. So I have it now. Um, we could give multiple descriptions and um, I got to still add my S into that guys. So I'm going to do that now S and I had all of this, but this is what happened when you're doing stuff on the take. And, um, but, um, there you go. We got everything right now, right pal? Praise God. He's mm -hmm. awesome. God. So there you go, guys. So don't, do a refresh if you do a refresh you might lose us but um if you do a refresh if you read in the words don't worry about it god is awesome god so that's what we're doing so we're doing it about three um descriptions or um attributes amen so you know who is god if you ask every person who god is you would get a different answer who God is to you. Moses said, who should I say that sent me when God told him to go to his people? And God said, I am that I am. You tell them that I am sent you. I am that I am. Whatever they need me to be. Amen. 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 Um, a healer. Mm -hmm. A protector, mm -hmm. huh? Uh, a sustainer, a father, a God, a man, a blessing, a miracle worker, whatever you need him to be, that he will be to you. The things that are of God, amen? Amen. And whatever your needs are, he said that I shall supply. Cast all your worries upon him because he care for you. And he really does. Amen. He really does care for us. Amen. And so, you know, God has a humor because we have humor. Amen. Amen. The humor comes from him. Amen. And I'm sure I probably hear about this again when I'm in heaven. <laughs> 
in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. If God don't bring it up, one of you guys might bring it up. Hey, you remember that time? You know, because all that's good stays with us. But all of that stuff that makes us cry and resent and regret, you know, things that if we can go back and change, we would do this. All of that stuff would be wiped away from us. All of that stuff would be gone. It'll be, you have a clean slate, praise God. Things that can hamper you. Things that can make you sad. Because it says in heaven, every day is going to be better than the day before. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to be rejoicing and singing. Amen. Glory to God. So he's an awesome God. Yes, he is. And how are we going to do that when we know that loved ones, when we don't see them in heaven? Well, God said, who is my Mother, who is my sister? Who is my brother? Who is my father? You know, our father is the heavenly father. We really look at it in a biblical aspect. Amen. You know, so, but my sister in Christ, my brother in Christ is my sister, is my brother. Let's look at the elders. My mother in Christ, my father in Christ is my brothers, my sisters. When you look at it, that way. That's your true family. The true family, I know that is hard. It's hard. And we're talking about something that is beyond us. But being in the flesh, not even Jesus wanted to depart. He said, if thou would take this cup from me, but not my will be done, but thy will be done. Because he got used to his friends, the ones that he loved. And so it's hard to let go. Amen? Amen. It's hard to let go. You know, but when we are there, we're not going to remember those that are not of Christ. Now, the words that we'll be able to look down and be reminded, you know, of what is the raises of sin. It's in the scripture. I don't know which one it is. If I knew I was going to say it, I would have had it. And I'll probably bring it up the next time we talk. Hey, man, I'll go look for it. And, um, but, you know, we're going to be rejoicing. And you cannot rejoice remembering if you have a mother or a father or a sister or a brother or a wife or a husband or a child that did not make it into heaven. But we're going to rejoice. Why? Because the word says that because God, he's a righteous God. And so for that reason alone, we will be rejoicing. Amen. Because God is the initiator. So <laughs> let's get into that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so God, the initiator. John chapter one, verses one through three. So we're going to look at it from a different angle. Go ahead, pal. Hey, Amen. See, wow. I guess it'll choke off something. I don't know what it is. Hey, Amen. She'll be back. But um, John 1, chapter 1 through 3. God is good. Hey, Amen. And um, remember, it's percepts upon percept, concepts upon concepts. You know, we learn. On top of learning is what we do. That's how we learn. We learn on top of learning. Amen. And so that's what we're doing. We are learning on top of learning. And that's how we learn. That's when you go to school. You know, you go to the first grade. Some people get to skip the first grade. You know, some people get to skip, you know, kindergarten or whatever the case might be. They go to Head Start. Amen. Because skip kindergarten goes straight into grade school. It depends on how smart they are. But, you know... That's 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 what we do. That's that's how we learn. You know, percept upon percept is what we do. That's that's how we learn. You know, and that's 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 God. That's that's the word of God. Even Jesus Christ Himself had to um learn how to be obedient because he was a child and he came as a teacher. We call him Rabbi. He's teacher, master. So everything that Jesus went through was a lesson for us to duplicate. Jesus was a child, even at a child, he was about his father's business. The words say that the world is not big enough 
if everything that Jesus did was written in a book, that the book would not, would be too big for the world to hold, is what it says. Amen? So, what is it? Um, You know, so the word says, I think it's Proverbs. Um, what, what, it says, but the word of the Lord was unto them percept upon percept Percept upon percept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snare and taken. Now, we're not going to get into, you know, all of that and everything, but Basically, that's how we learn. You know, when you go in the military, they break you down. You know, they take you, they break you down, and they put you back together again. They rebuild you. They rebuild you. They, they put you, they rebuild you to be um, minded, soldier minded. And I think what I was reading was out of the book of Isaiah, I think. Uh, was it out of the book of Isaiah? I know it's one out of the book of 28 or, well, Isaiah 28, 10 through 13. Um, praise God. Anyhow, so anyhow, I'm paraphrasing. But God is an awesome God. He's, a, he's an awesome God. So John 1, verses 1 through 3, speaks about in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Amen. And so, and I was I was going also, guys, to um the book of um, Hebrews, and I took from it because I wanted to go back where we was at, praise God, because we was talking about faith, and I, I come back to that. But it says that the, in the beginning, the word was with God, the word was God. Amen. And so, you know, and let me go to John. Let me turn to John right fast, praise God. Turn to John right fast. It said, um, in the beginning was the word, um, John chapter one, verse one, and the word was with God and the word was God. And then chapter two, I didn't get to that, but here we go. Verse the same was in, um, chapter one, verse two. Thanks, pal. Mm -hmm. The same was in the beginning with God and all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made and then it goes on to verse 2 in him was life and the life was the light of man amen and so you know because you know he blew into the nostrils of adam after he created adam amen amen and not only that but when we was in darkness because of adam's sin that god also introduced Light into our darkness. Amen. Amen. Making our crooked path straight. Amen. And that was Jesus, Jesus Christ. Who he gave unto us. Who died on the cross for our sins. And for, for your sins and for my sins. For our sins. For the um, Jews and even the sins of the world. And the sins of the world. That's the Gentiles. That's us. Amen. So God is an awesome God. So. There you go. And guys, so we're going to talk about God, the initiator. We talked about, you know, getting around to it. God initiating, he initiates all things. He do. He initiate all things. Um, Christian theology has stressed it, that God is knowable only insofar as he is pleased to reveal himself. And so that's our foundation, guys, that he is the initiator of all things. Amen? Amen. And so, guys, join us next week here on the Tabernacle Trinity Hall, this show. And I'm trying to get away from this show. Amen? <laughs> um, where our favorite line of the B is, where you can say, where we can say to you that you, you are, are so beautiful. beautiful. God is an awesome God. And we love him because he first loved us. And, guys, you can tell that we just talked it through this. We didn't. 
you know, prepare anything or whatever the case might be, but we know what we wanted to talk about. Amen. Amen. We was more so excited about trying out our new format in the back. How you guys like it? Um, I think it's, it's, it's appealing to me. Amen. I like it. Praise God. Let me know two guys about the book. You know, should I pursue this, you know, in one whole book for all 34 chapters or should I continue to do one book per chapter? And if I did that, I probably end up doing a consolidated book on all of them also. Praise God. So we love you guys. We love you. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Be good and stay encouraged. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen.